Hey guys, welcome back to AOA Gaming. This is Perry, and today we're going to be looking at Days Gone for the PlayStation 4. Now, if you're not familiar with the channel, the way we do things here is that we try to find positive notes in video games as they can be influential towards the game community and also gamers and in general. And the way you do that is by looking at the content app beforehand and try to review it in that light as well. Now, without further ado, let's dive into a survival zombie shooter in Days Gone, produced by Ben Studios. Uh, never actually played any of their games before this, but it was interesting to see what they were able to bring forth to the gaming community with Days Gone. Now, the main character in this story is Deacon St. John. He was a part of the biker club. So if you're up to Sons of Anarchy Alley and you love that kind of stuff, this game is for you. For me, I grew up watching Sons of Anarchy, but it's like one of those kind of shows like where you fade in and fade out. So to see it kind of in like in a video game format in a post-apocalyptic world, it was rather interesting to see how they were going to be able to pull it off because when it comes to horror games or even post-apocalyptic games, you have to be able to do it correctly or some people are, some people just check out of it more than others. And Days Gone keeps you on its heels the entire gaming experience. And this is uh, noticed through the way it's able to <laughs> have you pick between how you want to go about chasing zombies or sorry the correct word is freakers for this game so freakers so to be able to understand how they move now if you go during the daytime then they're easier to kill but there's a bigger swarm if you go at nighttime they're more visually intact and know how to react so they try to catch you off guard and at first as my play through this this game it was kind of experience that i didn't like because it just felt like i was being overwhelmed it felt hard but once you start upgrading your gear and actually understanding how to go about some of these actual hordes it was an amazing experience that i felt fun towards maybe halfway through the game the game is about 50 hours long give or take if you decide to do everything but with that though, it felt very long-winded. It felt like there's several times where the game could have ended, and I would have been perfectly fine with it. But they added so much more content to the story, where it started to feel like it was just dragging. And at one point in time, I just felt like it could have been over at any point. But the more you play it, the more you try to get engrossed with the story that Ben Studio was able to put forth for towards us, and it's seen throughout the entire 50 hours. The overall story sees you playing as Deacon, trying to find himself in this post-apocalyptic world, and now all of a sudden he gets a hint that maybe his significant other, Sarah, is technically still alive. It's just a small glimpse of hope that Deacon seems to not want to give up on. And that's true to the character. And just his overall character is something of what the mindset is. Do whatever it takes to stay alive. You have to be able to adjust to what he wants to feel like. And I felt like Ben Studios did a good job with that with this character. Because he has this code of, I won't shoot a woman unless I have a reason to. So with that being said, he's a gentleman at heart, but he won't take likely to have to pull the trigger unless he has to. So so it holds true to the overall character as it is able to show what someone would do in the post-apocalyptic world. And the overall supporting cast in the game is amazing in this game. They actually had a deeper role towards me in the sense as the way they were portrayed. As the problem with the overall story is it's dialogue choices. Maybe because it's biker related and I don't really follow the biker culture. So if you do, and this game is for you because you understand the language you're speaking and the dialect makes sense or like get low or ride me like you ride your bike things like that are noteworthy that they put in this game just for you guys that are into the biking culture and that's good because it's holds true to what the whole california oregon line is and that's cool because that's what sons of iron Arcade was based off of and it's true that you see bikers riding around the fact that deacon still wears his 
cut on his back it just means that he's loyal to the gang the biker gang that he was part of before the post apocalyptic stuff happened it's just great to see that immersion is in this game it was just terrifying to see some of the dialogue choices if this game was maybe like choice based then okay that's fine but for it to be pre-recorded it felt like um would a person really say these things in the real world and it what just wasn't believable to me for the way they were saying things now let's move forward with the gameplay mechanics that are in this game this is your just a straightforward third person open world third person shooter game where with mission selections and upgrading uh, your bike as you that is key in this game is to be able to upgrade your bike to be able to get away from mass swarms of hordes of freakers and the way you position your bike is key in this game because you have to upgrade your bike some people actually suggest that you upgrade your bike faster than par compared to actually getting the guns. It's however you want to play as a gamer because it is your choice. Me personally, I went the, the bike route because I felt like I needed to get away. But the longer you play the game, you realize that you know, I parked my bike maybe about 10 or 120 feet back from like where the, I'm headed into. Just because I felt like... This can be easy, and it's more of a challenge, and it's fun to do. Horde battles are amazingly fun and challenging until you are able to set up traps and to be able to do things, like I said earlier. You can actually take them out fairly quickly as you learn how to trap things, be able to prepare. Just go in with a n nice mindset of being strategic, and you should be fun. Now, this game is also supposed to be stealth-based. It, you can tell by the way you go into some of these ambush camps. Ambush camps are mod little modules on the map that helps you be able to fast travel faster in this game. Because otherwise you're going to be driving your bike for a long periods of time. And you can actually run out of gas which makes you have to like find fuel tanks to be able to fill up your gas. And like you don't want to be able to do it. Always keep your bike filled up. So you can find them at uh, random houses for like get, uh, fill up your bike. You also have to repair your bike with screws. So any kind of damage that happens to you, you have to repair it or your bike won't move. Then you will be stranded or you can always get it back by going to the next encampment site and then paying a small fee to be able to get it. But the problem is with the whole gas filling up for your bike is that there are fuel uh, gas stations that are there in the world where you can go at to at any time of course they're run over by freakers at the point but once you take the freakers out you can just go there and just fill up and then you can just continue to drive and i guess they've made this mechanic for anyone that just wants to be able to ride their bike to experience it but if you just want to get through the story and get to the next place your fast traveling also costs fuel but you're going to be able to get to the next spot as fast as possible and most of the times the fuel tanks are still there at the locations that you fast travel to so it's kind of like a in-game continuity error that didn't doesn't make sense but it's there so utilize it while you can before they make maybe a patch they like make this survival rate of that going down but it's always crazy to see that they want you to feel like you're in the game with limited resources but there are gas stations so it doesn't make sense to me whatsoever and the more you play the game you're gonna be like okay i'm tired of driving this bike i'm tired of holding r2 let me just go and fast travel to the next spot and get to, and get on with the story or whatever you're trying to do within the game now the encampment sites are all individual and you had to upgrade their trust to be able to get probably some of their best weapons or best materials for your bike people i can see that they have a problem with this because why do i have to upgrade different camps to be able to upgrade for this specific item going forth with that i can say that if you were to live in a post-apocalyptic world you are not going to be 
entitled for these kind of things because you are a drifter. So that means that you are going back and forth between all the camps playing as deacon. So you're not in part of one camp because you're working for all the camps. Also, it's the fact of in that kind of mindset, you do not trust anyone else because of what they might do. You might have a militia attack happen, or you might have someone try to invade you. So, why have it towards, like, where you automatically have the trust system amongst all three? Now, if you were to go, if they were to add some kind of, like, item, like, where you could just go ahead and get all three, or, like, all five encampments to that point, where they uh, upgrade their trust, then so be it. But... It increases the difficulty and it makes you want to play more of the game. But also with that, it's padding in the sense of you don't want to do it and it takes too much time. One of the trophies is actually to raise your level to level three trust for three encampments. That takes time because there's like a thousands and thousands of experience that you've had to get for each encampment to have this happen. Also, the problem with it is, is that you ha- you can just go and sell to, like, anybody. But, like, so a piece of meat might t- cost, like, 10 camp credits. Well, the next upgrade is 25000 Why is it so high? It makes coursework hot- harder difficulty. But you get to experience it. The way you increase things is by either taking out your hordes doing the jobs that they the encampments offer you to do which is also a kind of a mess itself because you can be out in the world just driving around and all of a sudden they go like deacon i need a job done so it's like okay i gotta drive all the way back even though it was just in your encampment to get the job that you want me to do that in itself is not mind-numbing because you're just at the location you just saw the person that was in charge of the encampment but they didn't say anything to you it's like you had to be out and what they call the shit to be able to understand that people can't just get to you whenever they want because it's over a radio but the problem is is that i walk literally outside of the encampment and i'll soon get a radio in well at this point i want to go ahead and do the main story why would you do this right now and the whole layout for the way the story missions are done is just kind of a mess because it's like, how do you know what exactly is done? What leads to the hundred percentage tile if you're a completionist? So you literally have to continuously play the game until you get all story missions entitled. And like, there is in-game content as the hordes are technically the in-game contents, but in-game content as well is the infestation nest these is our locations like where you can take out all the nest that makes it safer for you to drive through and this in itself is not really that hard all you do is throw a molotov into a nest and just kill the freakers that come out of it and you're good to go and there's just maybe about three to six or maybe even 12 in the area and you just get to take out those and you're just able to safely drop through those areas and not have to worry about freakers also there are nero research sites which are which are pretty much scientist sites like that we're studying the freakers that lead back behind these like nero projectors that actually allow you to upgrade your health focus and stamina which is vital in this game as you're either going to be facing hordes or even the humans in the game which also can be difficult at times as the way they are try to set up and i've actually died a few times during this game it, the game is not easy at first but the more you progress it gets better it reminds me of breath of the wild in that sense because at first, when you're playing Breath of the Wild, it seems very hard, but when you start upgrading your gear, it becomes a, such an easier game and way more f- enjoyable. And that, and that was good, I'm playing an open world game like that he's gone. Also, the skill points are a kind of a mess because they're all over the place. You have to like be able to 
upgrade this many skills to be able to grab a skill that you really want. So if you want to play a particular way like survival, melee, or ranged, you have to go through a complete tier to be able to get what you want. Leveling up felt like it took forever, but the more story missions you do, the more ambushes you do, or even the hordes you chase, those are also ways for you to be able to level up. But the way that it seemed to get the most experience points is by just doing the story missions. And that was something that I figured out relatively quickly that I decided to do more of. Actual side missions seem repetitive as you, it's really either you go chase down someone at a, a camp. Or you do a bounty hunt. Or you have to do a whole bike chasing. Hence why you need to upgrade your bike. That way you can be able to do some of the chases. And the whole format in, in terms of controls when it comes to the overall gameplay is clunky. And you have to get used to it fairly quick or you're going to be all over the place. I know me personally, it took me maybe about two days just to be able to grasp how to be able to do some of the moves or setups or switch between guns that you want to also, you can just hit a uh, double tap tri triangle to get to your next gun, but that just didn't feel right if I wanted to lay a trap instead of switching from guns. The guns are great. The more you upgrade an encampment, the better guns that you get, and it just felt easy to, sh to blast through hordes or humans alike, which felt like the game was becoming relatively repetitive because I knew exactly what to expect. And there was no sense of change. So it felt super easy to have the best gun in the game. And just wipe it out completely. That sounds like I was complaining about being overpowerful. Even playing on a normal difficulty. It was just, just the fact that I was expecting more of a moment every time. It were me personally. I used a, a melee weapon through most of the ambush camps. Because I felt like I didn't want to waste my ammo in those certain situations. But I did grow fond of sniping people out, like, because there are snipers everywhere, as this world's supposed to feel alive when you're going through it, because, like, people set up traps that can knock up your bike, that makes you have to repair it, or there's just, like, wolves trying to chase you down, like, while you're driving, and it's like, oh, let me shoot at you while I'm still driving. That was kind of cool. But it felt repetitive as the world, for some sense, didn't seem alive. And like how I said that these freakers actually work in certain ways. Daytime, they're weaker. Nighttime, they're not. So most of the time, I did all my stuff during the day. You can sleep time cycle in this game. So it made that easier. Now, some story elements have you had to do some of the missions at night, some of them during the day, but if you're just trying to go chase a horde, you can do it any time of the day that you want, so that made it f feel a little easier for me, at least. But sometimes I will go at night and see how it, I stacked up, and I did fairly well. Sometimes I failed, and sometimes it just made me feel like I needed to get better doing it, and over time, it just made it more of an enjoyable game to be able to over come some of the obstacles of facing some of the biggest hordes in the game to some of the smallest ones and you can really tell the difference and when you do that it makes the game completely fun and which i enjoyed overall music made it feel like i was watching like a tv show like it would play at certain times and it made me go like oh this is really enjoyable I like the music choices as it seems to be more laid back, guitar playing, uh, rock and rollish at times, or even countryish at times, which made me appreciate the overall atmosphere that they were trying to give towards the Oregon biker club culture. And it really stacks up in Days Gone. Now, the way we review things here at AOA Gaming is by seeing how it is influential to the gaming community and also a gamer i do this on the rating as being not influential potential influential or very influential and i have to say that days gone is a influential game that can be 
hit or miss for any gamer. If you are in a mindset of comparing games like open world games to like The Witcher or, or Horizon Zero Dawn or even Breath of the Wild, it really isn't up to that par. It's fun to take out the horse because those are the best parts of the game, hands down. Also, the story is great once you get past the whole, whole middling of it. But if you just want the overall experience of a game, the story, and you love game, if you love The Walking Dead or Sons of Anarchy, you are going to love a game like Days Gone. It's storytelling of individuals coming together to stay alive during a political world is key and it's always fascinating to see that no matter if you were in a prison a biker democrat republican just that you had to put all that to aside to be able to survive together and those are what should be in every apocalyptic game that you play or movie that you watch just seeing how people re interact with each other how they are going to survive together and Days Gone really tries to hit that with the fact that do these jobs go out and do this for the encampment that's what's key in, in this game and it wasn't to about the midpoint of the game because it took me some time just to be able to get into the game but the more I played it the more fun I had with it and it made me want to power through the game and just have the experience that I was looking for from a Sony title and from Ben Studio who hasn't seen any kind of daylight in years past. If you like this, uh, go ahead and hit the like button or even hit the subscribe button or even leave your comments in the section below and tell me what you thought about Days Gone or what you expected and what you liked or didn't like. Or if you're even planning on playing Days Gone at maybe a later time in the year or fears recently i hope that this review helped you in the sense of seeing how games can play a positive mindset in the right of thinking and their storytelling and their gameplay and the mechanics that they use within their games to make you feel appreciative of the game this game is just influential it's not even very influential it doesn't move the needle like the witcher or horizon zero dawn but it was an experience that was enjoyable once the more i played it and once i started having fun with it i could see the, the individualism that ben studio was trying to put for the biker culture that it was trying to have for and also its movement of never giving up and something that you want to be true and that was in the entirety of days gone now, this has been AWA Gaming. You all have a great day. Like, subscribe, comment below. You all have a great day.